Welcome back Cosa One students, Professor Almeida here. And in this video, I wanna walk you through skill review 3.2. Hopefully by now you know the drill. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. You can see that I already have it open here in Simnet Word SR 3.2. Again, just follow the link from Canvas. I've already downloaded the start file. So let's go ahead and begin. In this project, you will be formatting and editing a paper on alternate assessments for students. You will apply a theme and then alter the theme by changing the style set and the color theme. You will adjust the margins for the document. You will add information to the footer of the document and a page number and date to the header of the document. You will link to a section in the document. You will add a cover page and then edit the information displayed. Finally, you will print a range of the pages in the document quite a bit going on here as before make sure you take a look at the training sim and you've had a chance to go through the different tasks as before if you are taking coastal one face to face usually i'll have you dive right in to the project i'll explain the concepts along the way and then you do the training sim afterwards but if you are taking this class online please make sure that you do take a look at the training sim you go through those tasks so that you have an idea of what you're about to see. Okay, here are the skills needed to complete this document. And let's get started with step one by opening the start file. So you can see I have it here. Let's go ahead and launch it and then click on enable editing. So I'll get rid of this here. And it's gonna take a moment or two uh, while Microsoft verifies the file, okay, you might you might see this on your system. So while this is happening, let me go ahead and check off the steps for steps one and two. All right, step three, we want to apply a theme to the document. So let me show you what themes are all about. Okay, there it is, enable editing. If I go into the design tab, Right, if I go into the design tab and then I click on themes in the document formatting group, you'll see that there are different color palettes, different defaults. You can choose from any of the themes uh, that best suits you. And you can see again, there's that live preview as I'm mousing over the different themes here. Let's take a look at the instructions and see what they want actually. So we want the retrospect theme. So again, go into the design tab in the document formatting group, you're gonna click on themes and then select retrospect. Okay, so here it is, themes, and then we want the retrospect theme. So very important, make sure you get the step done because if you have to change things later on, like the font color, you're gonna notice that your color palette is off and you're wondering, hey, wait, where's this color that they're asking about? Okay, so we're gonna set this to the retrospect theme. Don't worry about the rest of this for now. Okay. Step four. Ver uh, step four, change the style set for the document. Verify that you are still in the design tab and in the style set gallery, we're gonna click the basic stylish option. Okay, in my case, I left the design tab, so we'll go back. And again, in the document formatting group, let me see. Style set gallery, click the basic stylish option. Okay, basic elegant, basic simple, basic stylish. There it is. We want basic stylish. Change the color theme. Design tab, document formatting, click colors, and then select the blue color theme. So what we're doing here is we're actually overriding the retrospect theme settings. And you can do that, right? You could choose the theme and then later on decide, you know what? In this case, I actually want these colors instead. So you can keep some elements of the theme and then change what you want. In this case, we're, we've changed the we changed the style set, we're changing the colors. Okay, so you can override those uh, basic theme settings. All right, step six, let's adjust the margins. And to do that, we go into the layout tab, page setup group. And you're gonna 
see more often than not in Word, there's more than one way to do certain things. Okay, so in this case, changing margins. Okay, we can do that in the layout tab in the page setup group. We can click on margins or we can bring up the dialog box launcher and you can see here you can make changes to margins as well. So again, just wanted to show you there's often more than one way to do things. We're going to select the moderate preset for margins. So here we go. Margins, moderate. All that moderate is, it's just changing the left and right margins to three quarters of an inch. Okay. Top and bottom still stay as one inch. Okay. By default, it's one inch all around, but moderate simply changes left and right. Okay. And then just to convince you, here's what it looks like. So you can see here, left and right, both set to 0.75. Okay, step seven, let's talk about headers and footers. Now, in print layout view, this is what this view is called, by the way, it's called print layout view. You can see I have a ruler here, okay? And then this is your left margin, this is your right margin. There's another ruler over here. Here is your top margin. And then toward the bottom, you'll see the bottom margin. Now, in this area up here, right? This white space that's between the left and right margins and within the top margin, this area up here that I'm circling, this is what's called the header. And if you go toward the bottom of the page, right, you go down to the bottom of the page here. Okay, here's that bottom margin. This area here is what's called the footer. Okay, this area here is what's called a footer. And what they want us to do for this step, step seven, is to add footer text. And to do that, using the ribbon, we're going to click the insert tab and in the header footer group, we're gonna click footer and select ion dark. So again, let's break this up and take one step at a time. So insert tab, header and footer group, we're going to click on footer. Okay, insert tab, header and footer group, we're gonna click on footer and then we're gonna choose from this list, ion dark. Okay, so we're gonna have to scroll down a little bit. There it is, ion dark. That's what we want. And immediately it takes us right down into the footer. Notice that you now have the header and footer tab. Okay, this just showed up. And you could also bring this up by double clicking into the footer that does the same thing. But in this case, we have a specific footer we want. In this case, it's called ion dark. Click the title control at the far left side of the footer and you're going to type in alternate assessments notice how it appears here okay so here's the title control this is called the document title control you just click into it okay and then we're going to type in alternate assessments all right so that's the first part of this now for the author control on the right we're going to type in lindsay alexander Okay, and you want to double check your typing here. So author name, click into the control. They call this the control, this placeholder here. Okay, this is what's called a control. And it is Lindsay Alexander. Okay, let me double check real quick here. Looks good. And then in the header and footer tab, you're going to click the close header and footer button. Okay, and what this does, it takes you out of the footer in this case, and then back into the body of the document. Alternately, you can just double click into the body of the text, does the same thing. All right, how are we doing so far, folks? If you need that pause button, you do have it. So let me go ahead and take a quick break and give you some time to catch up. We'll be right back. All right, we're back, folks. Let's get into step eight here. Step eight, insert page numbers and display a different first page for the header. Once again, we go into the insert tab, header and footer group. Okay, insert tab, header and footer group. Now it's page number, and the page number that they want is what's called accent bar one. It's at the top of page. So. Here's what they mean by this. Okay, let me show you. If you were to click on page number, again, in the insert tab, header and footer group, click on page number, you see that there's different menus here. Top of page, right? We want top of page. And then again, the specific one they want is what's called accent bar one. Okay, this is the part where you might want to have the instructions printed out and in front of you. So we're going to scroll down to, whoops, 
there it is. Scroll down to accent bar one. Okay, there's the page number. And let's see what else they want here. In the header and footer tab options group, select the different first page checkbox. Now, here's what this option does. Okay, if you click on different first page, what this does, it changes the header and footer for the very first page of the document. Okay, notice how if you scroll down, you'll notice that the footer is also missing. But on subsequent pages after page one, you can see there's the page number. And then if we go down to the footer, you'll see there's, there's the footer there. And then there's the top of page three. So that's what happens when you select different first page. And then at this point, they want us to go ahead and close the header and footer. So let's do that. Okay, we'll return back to our project here and close out of the header and footer. And let's make sure to save our document. All right. Now, step nine. Let's add an automatic date stamp. Navigate to page two, double click the header area to activate it. Okay, so here's what we do. Let's go to page two. Again, there's different ways that you can do this. All right, let's double click into the header area. And there it is. There's the header and footer tab. Let's go ahead and add an automatic date stamp. Okay, place the cursor after the word page and press the tab key two times. Okay, so after the word page, let's go ahead and hit the tab key twice. One, two. And now let's go ahead and add the date in the header and footer tab. Click the date and time button. So let's go ahead and do that. There it is in the insert group. We're going to click on date and time. And now we get to choose the format. And what they want here is the MMDDYYYY format. So for example, 01 slash 01 slash 2022. So let's go ahead and find that format here. Okay, actually it's the first one. This, this works. Okay, we want that first one. And let's see if there's anything else they want. Have the update, have the date update automatically. So we're gonna tick this box for update automatically and then click okay. And there you go. And then let's close out of the header and footer. So that is step nine, folks. All right, step nine. Let's go ahead and close that header and footer. Let's move on to step 10. Navigate, actually I read ahead. Add a hyperlink to another place in the document. Navigate to the modified achievement requirements section. Okay, so we need to look for modified achievement requirements. Here's that section. Place the cursor after the third sentence ending in to receive an alternate assessment and press the space bar one time. Okay, so after the third sentence ending in to receive an alternate assessment. Okay, there's that third sentence and then we'll press the space bar once. Click the insert tab and the links group, click the link button. So again, let the instructions help you here. Insert tab, links group click the link button. So let's go to the insert tab. There's the links group, there's link, and then just click the button. Okay, and now this comes up. Under link to select place in this document. Okay, under link to, we're going to select place in this document. There it is, second option right here. Okay, place in this document, select who is eligible. Okay, who is eligible. And in the text to display, this is where we're gonna make the change. And this is what's gonna show up in our document. Type in, see the who is eligible section in parentheses. Okay, so here's what it's gonna look like. Text to display. See the who is eligible section. Let me make sure I type this in correctly. Okay, see the who is eligible section. So this is what's going to appear in the document itself, right? See the who is eligible section. Once you click okay, 
there's the link and then if you control click that link it's going to take you to the who is eligible section so let's test this out real quick just to make sure it works okay i'm going to go ahead and control click and it should take me to who is eligible there it is all right so that is our part on hyperlinks in the document okay step 11 let's add a watermark to the document and it's useful to include watermarks whenever you're working with drafts or perhaps it's a confidential document you can have it show up in the background and typically it's going to run diagonally across the page it's going to say confidential draft whatever you want let me show you what it looks like here all right in the design tab page background section we're going to click the watermark button and select draft two so again go to the design tab page background group there it is watermark and you can see there's confidential do not copy and then we want draft two okay so i might have to scroll down a little bit here there's draft two under disclaimers and you can see there's that watermark in the background. It's not going to be diagonal in this case. It's just going to be horizontally across. You can see it says draft there. All right, let's go ahead and save our project. And now let's talk about page breaks. Now, by default, Word automatically wraps your text as you type. What does that mean? So if you're typing out a paragraph, right? You're just typing, typing, typing. Once you get to that right margin, Word is going to automatically wrap your text onto the next line, okay? If you think old school like typewriters back in the day, what you ended up doing was you would, you would type and then there would be a ding and that would clue you in that you need to manually move to the next line so that you can start typing otherwise it's just going to run right off the page well with word all you have to do is just type 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 and it will automatically move you to the next line and you just keep right on going now if you get to the end of the page word is automatically going to break the page in other words it's going to create a new page so that you can continue sometimes however you might not want that to happen. Let's say, for example, if you're writing a research paper, you need to follow the proper formatting. Let's say with your work cited or bibliography. Usually your work cited or bibliography is on a separate page. That means you'll need to manually break the page so that your work cited is on its own page. Or maybe there are times for readability purposes where you begin a new paragraph but that first line is at the end of one page and then the rest of the paragraph ends up on another. You don't want that to happen. Also, maybe you're typing away on a paragraph and then the last line of the paragraph ends up on the next page. You don't want that to happen either. So there are times where you want to manually break the page. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, so in step 12, we're going to insert a page break. You're going to navigate to the summary heading and place the cursor at the beginning of the line. So what's gonna happen is summary is gonna end up on its own page, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Navigate to the summary heading, okay? Navigate to the summary heading, there it is. And then we're going to place our insertion point at the beginning of summary here, okay? So, so it should look like this, right? Place the cursor at the beginning of the line and the layout tab page setup group you're going to click breaks and select page that's one way to do it okay so if we go to the layout tab page setup group under breaks there it is there's page break okay that's one way to do it and what's going to happen summary ends up on its own page let me show you two other ways to do this you can also go into the insert tab pages group and you could choose page break and then you could see there your keyboard shortcut is control return or control enter okay that's going to do it also so three ways to break a page okay here they show you to go into the layout tab page setup group breaks and then you choose page break okay so that's how you can manually break a page 
All right, step 13, let's add a cover page. And you do this by going into the Insert tab, Pages group, and then clicking on Cover Page. So again, let the instructions help you here. So let's go to the Insert tab, Pages group, Cover Page, and let's see, they want you to select Wisp. That's the name of it. Okay, somebody up there at Microsoft got paid a whole lot of money to come up with these names. All right, here you go, Wisp. So the cover page ends up being the first page of your document. And again, you can see the controls here and we can change our controls to whatever we want. So let's see, they want us to delete the date control. So you're just gonna simply select the date control and press the delete key. Okay, so here's the date control, just select it and then delete it. Okay, that's gone. Okay, your date control is gone. So let's make sure our date control is gone. And one more time, just to show you here, select that date control and it's gone. Okay, date control is gone. Moving right along, let's see what else they want us to change here. Select the document subtitle control and type making sure no child is left behind. Okay, so let's look for that document subtitle and type in making sure making sure let me double check my typing here making sure no child is left behind there we go no child is capital i is left behind all right let's go ahead i already took that box all right, last step. Let's preview and print a specific page range. But before I do that, let me go ahead and save this document real quick. So how do we print, save, or whatnot? We have what's called Backstage View. That's the File tab. If I click on the File tab, this is what's called Backstage View. Okay, you can see I have a number of different options here. I can choose save and save as now real quick what's the difference between save and save as since we're here if you are saving a document for the first time you choose save as and with save as you have to tell word three things now if you remember computers are dumb you got to tell them what to do in the case with word and you choose save as you have to tell word number one where are you going to save the document? Okay, you have to choose your folder, where it's going to go. Number two, what's gonna be the name of your document? And then finally, what type of document? Usually with the, the third part of that, it's a, it's a Word document by default, you know, that docx extension. So uh, a lot of times you have to tell Word, okay, where are you going to save it and what are you going to call it? Uh, that third option on the document type, usually you only change that uh, for example, if it's a resume, right? If you're putting together a resume and you want that formatting to stay and you don't want anyone to really change your resume, you can change that third option, that type into what's called a PDF, okay? That's when you would change the document type. So that's the difference between save as and save. Save as, you have to tell Word uh, where you're gonna save it, what you're gonna call it. With save, it automatically assumes, okay, you're saving the document to this specific place with this name. But if anything changes, you have to do save as. I hope that makes some sense. So we have save, save as, print, share, export. You can see a number of different options here. And then anything related to your account, right? All that stuff uh, you can do right here in backstage view. Okay. So let me show you the more button real quick. There it is, your account, feedback, and uh, options with Word. But in this case, we wanna choose print. There's your print preview. Let's see what they want here. In the pages box, type three through five. So we're gonna print a specific range here, okay? Pages, you're gonna type in three through five, just like that. And what that means, only pages three, four, and five will print. Verify the name of your printer appears under printer. You know what? Don't worry about that. And then for part D, especially if you are taking this class face to face, you don't need to print. Okay. Just know that the big print button is there. 
okay just know that it's there and then this is where you change your printer but uh, again don't worry about that just make sure that you save and close out of word before submitting your project so let's go ahead save and close out of word and let's turn this in all right so we're going to go back to the top let's upload and submit this for grading here it is skill review three and we'll have our moment of truth let's submit the file so i hope that this video has helped you out and hopefully by now you pretty much have the rhythm down so let me show you real quick just to verify that it is a hundred percent as before if you didn't get a hundred percent you do have three attempts take a look at the steps that you missed make the changes and then resubmit so i'm going to click back onto word sr32 and then you can see your instructions again and then go through steps two and three anyway thanks for watching folks Hopefully you got 100% on your first try. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.